Hello there, I am Dr. C.N. Okolubo. You're welcome to my YouTube channel where we'll be solving problems relating to business mathematics, business statistics, analysis for business decision, as well as other related topics. I want to encourage you as you go through these videos with me, you have your paper, your pen, and your calculator to solve these problems with me. Also, please do like, share, and subscribe so that you can receive notifications for upcoming videos that will be uploading. Thank you. Hello there, thank you for joining me once again on my channel. We, to, we are going to look at um, chi-square again today, but today's uh, topic is going to, we're going to examine chi-square test of goodness of fit. In chi-square test of goodness of fit, you will be given proportions or values in percentages for you to compare whether the values you have in percentages match the values you have maybe in terms of the samples or the observed um, frequencies that you have. So from the, um, from the proportions or the percentages that you're given, you will use that to calculate your expected frequency. The whole idea of um, chi-square calculation is to be able to determine what your expected frequencies are from the observed frequency that you are given. Remember, in goodness of fit, you will be given proportions or you will be given uh, percentages of values from there you want to calculate your expected frequency. Let's look at what we have on our workboard uh, for, this, for, for this video. Here, look at example one of tests of goodness of fit. A survey was conducted and uh, from the survey, the age groups of women were, were counted so that those that were 20 to 24 were 103, 25 to 34 were 216, 35 to um, 35 to 44 by 171. But in the population proportion, there are 18% for this group. For this other group, there are 50%. For this other group, they are 32%. So we want to check whether these values you have in the sample are the, they match the values you have in the proportion. We don't know what the proportions are, but we're given the but we don't know what the population is but we are given the proportion that these groups represent in the, in the population. So we want to check whether these values match these values, this proportion. That's the essence of goodness of fit. That's what we do. So the question here required, conduct a chi-square goodness of fit test to determine whether the sample provides a good match with the age distribution in the population at 0.05 level of significance. Let's solve this as quickly as we can. We have the solution here. And the first thing we do in uh, finding solving chi square is to state the hypothesis. That's the first thing we do to state the hypothesis. And in stating the hypothesis, HO which is a norm hypothesis in this case, is that we we're saying that there is no difference in the, in the sample. There's no, there's no difference in the sample and population. There's no difference in the sample and population proportion. Okay, okay, then H1 is saying that H1 is saying that there is difference. There's difference in the sample and uh, population, population 
for personal. That's what we do. Yeah. So simple. That's what simply. That's what you would state as the uh, hypothesis. Now the next thing we do is to compute compute the expected expected frequencies. Now in this case, these values up here. Let's look at this. Are the observed? Remember that the count that the, these are the frequency counts. We want to now use these values as a proportion on this. So to get the expected, it will be these proportions times the expected. I mean times the total sample number for us to get the expected values for each of the groups. So we'll simply do this we'll simply do look at for group one let's say group one group one it will be 18 percent times 490 group two it will be 50 percent times 490 and then group three it will be 32 percent times 490 and so 18 percent times 490 will give us 88 50 percent times 490 will give us 245 and 32 percent of 490 will give us 167 so these become these become our expected frequency to guide us to solving a chi square. Remember, in test of goodness of it, you'll be given percentages or proportions. So you use that to solve, uh, to, to, to determine the sort of frequency. So let's go up to solving our chi square. Remember, chi square, the formula for chi square is the summation of observed minus expected all squared divided by the expected value. So what we want to find here is we we'll have our expected value, so the values, then we have um, observed value, expected values, then we have observed minus expected, then observed minus expected all squared, then observed minus expected all squared divided by expected. These are the five these are the five columns that created the solving um, chi square. Now the expected values are I mean the observed values are 103, 216, and 171. And then the expected the expected values for what we calculated are 88, 245, and 167 based on the what we calculated as expected. We now find the observed minus expected, 103 minus 88, that gives us 15. 216 minus 245, that gives us minus 29. 171 minus 157, that gives us 14, okay? Now let's now find the square of this. This will give us 2 to 5. Square of 29 will give us 841. And square of 14 is going to be 196. So we we'll use these values divided by the expected to get what will be here. All right, so 2 to 5 divided by 88 is going to give us 2.55. Six eight at four decimal places. Eight forty one divided by two forty five that gives us three point four three two seven. Please make sure you are following and using your calculator to do this. The next one one ninety six divided by one sixty seven that will give us one point two four eight four. That's what we have. Now we have to sum this, and when we sum this, this becomes a chi square. After summation of this, this gives us 
7.2379. That's 7.24. All right. Remember what we now do is to use these values, compare this value that we have we've calculated as our chi-square with what we have in the, on the table. But before then, our, our degree of freedom, degree, degree of freedom, in this case, we're not having a contingency table, we're just having a table. In this case, the, the degree of freedom is rho minus one, rho minus one. And we have three rows minus one, that gives us two. So two becomes our degree of freedom. So let's now go and let's go and check our chi-square um, calculated from our table. Please follow me. Let's look at our chi-square calculated from our table. Here we're looking at we're looking at degree of freedom two, and our question says we should. It's 0.05 develops in weekends. 0.05. So let's come back to of degree of freedom two, and then we're looking for 0.05. Okay. So what we have is 5.99. 5.99. Can you see that? The degree of freedom two, and then we'll scroll to 5.99. All right. Let's go back to our whiteboard. And solve this problem. So our chi-square, our chi-square calculated based on degree of freedom to a 0 0.05 uh, significance level is equal to 5.99. So let's compare which is greater. I remember the decision is that the decision we have to take is that if chi square calculated is greater than chi square tabulated, we will reject the null hypothesis. So, since in this case, since chi square calculated, which is 7.23 or 7.24, uh, that's one of 7.24 is greater than chi-square table, value in the chi-square table, which is the critical value, is greater than um, 5.99, what do we do? We will reject, reject what? Reject HO. That means that there's no evidence in the sample to show that the number in the sample is the same as what we have in the population proportion. So that will work. So it means that this means that this means that the number of samples do not match the population proportion All right so that's what we have so our conclusion our conclusion in this case is that there is difference in the sample huh? and the Population proportion. Right. The population proportion. This is the solution to this question, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're watching from. This is how to solve the question of tests of goodness of fit. Remember, test of goodness of fit will present percentages or proportions for you to use as a basis to compare the values are the observed values against what is expected in the population. You are to now determine the expected values and also now compare 
with your calculate the chi square and compare this value with the critical values as you have in the distribution table. You compare if the one in the um, the chi square calculated is greater than the chi square in the table, you reject. If the chi square calculated is less than what you have in the table, you will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Thank you very much. Please do place a comment or two in the comment section. Like this video, share this video, and most especially if you have not subscribed, please do subscribe. Thank you very, very much.